This is a continuation of lecture SA54, in which we presented a method for analyzing three hinged arches. In this lecture, we expand our previous discussion by showing how one can go about determining maximum bending moment in an arch due to moving loads. Suppose we are asked to determine the locations and magnitudes of the absolute maximum positive and maximum negative moments in this three-hinged arch. Here are the relevant dimensions of the structure. In this scenario, moving loads are transmitted from the bridge deck to the supporting arch through four vertical posts. At any point in time, one or more posts may be involved in transferring the loads to the supporting substructure. For example, when two vehicles are on the bridge at the same time and they are positioned this way, then their loads are exerted on the arch at these two points. Let us denote the maximum vehicular load permitted on our bridge as P max. Then, the arch can be subjected to four such loads. For convenience, we're going to analyze the structure using unit loads. Then we multiply the results by P max in order to get the correct moment values. It is important to note that all four loads may not have to be present at the same time for the maximum moment to develop. In fact, as you will see in a minute, the maximum positive moment develops when only one of the posts is loaded. And for the maximum negative moment, we only need three of the four posts to be loaded. To figure out the locations and magnitudes of the critical moments, we are going to use the principle of superposition. Let's start by analyzing the arch under these four separate loading cases. We can then find the maximum moment values by combining the results obtained from the individual cases. For case one, we are going to analyze the arch under a vertical unit load, placed three meters away from the left pin support where a vertical post transfers the load from the bridge deck to the arch. Please review lecture SA54 since it covers the analysis of such an arch in more details. For example, that lecture explains how to come up with this parabolic equation for describing the shape of the arch. Since the height of our arch is 5.5 meters and it spans 23 meters, then the equation can be written this way. Given the pin supports at A and B, we can draw the free body diagram of the entire arch like this. Then, using the equilibrium equations, we can easily determine the two vertical support reactions. Now separate the left and the right arch segments at point C, like this. Since there is a hinge at that point, no bending moment develops at the crown of the arch. So considering the free body diagram of the left segment, we can sum the moments about C in order to determine the horizontal support reaction at A. Similarly, the free body diagram for the right segment of the arch can be used to determine B, X. Knowing the support reactions at A and B, we are now ready to write the moment equation for the entire arch. From beam analysis, we know that a concentrated load causes a discontinuity in the moment equation at the point of application of the load. Therefore, here we need one moment equation for the segment of the arch to the left of the unit load, where x is between 0 and 3, and another moment equation for the segment to the right of the unit load, where x is between 3 and 23. To write the moment equation for the left segment, let's cut the segment at an arbitrary point and draw a free body diagram that shows the internal forces at the cut point like this. Here we are using point A as the origin of our coordinate system. We shall do the same for the free body diagram of the right segment. To write the moment equation for the other segment, we cut the arch at an arbitrary point past the unit load 
and draw the free body diagram for the segment to the left of the cut point like this. Note that three unknown forces are present in each diagram, M, H, and R. But, since in this problem we are interested in the moment equation only, we are going to leave H and R alone. Let's sum the moments about the cut point and set it to zero. This gives us an algebraic expression in terms of x. For the left segment of the arch where x is between 0 and 3 meters, we get... And for the right segment where x is between 3 and 23 meters, we have... We can then graph these two equations to come up with the moment diagram for the entire arch for loading case 1. For loading case 2, the unit load is placed 9.5 meters away from point A. Here is the free body diagram of the entire structure. And here are the vertical support reactions. Again, we need to split the arch at C in order to calculate the horizontal reactions at A and B. Using the left segment of the arch, we determine AX. And using the right segment, we calculate BX. Note that in this problem, since there are no horizontal loads applied to the structure, AX always equals to BX in magnitude. Now we cut the arch to the left and to the right of the unit load in order to come up with the relevant moment equations like this. Here is the moment equation for the left segment. And here it is for the right segment. Then we can graph the moment diagram like this. We are going to repeat this process for loading case 3. Here are the vertical support reactions at A and B. Here are the horizontal reactions. Here are the free body diagrams. Here are the moment equations. And here is the bending moment diagram for the entire arch. For the last loading case, the unit load is placed 20 meters to the right of A. Consequently, we get these vertical reaction forces at A and B. Then, the horizontal reactions at the supports are going to be and, when we cut the arch to the left and to the right of the unit load, we end up with these free body diagrams. which enable us to write these bending moment equations. Here is the moment diagram for the arch for loading case 4. Now we are ready to determine the maximum positive and negative moments using the principle of superposition. To better ascertain the locations at which bending moment could be maximum, Let's examine all four diagrams simultaneously. They show that bending moment reaches its maximum positive value under the leftmost vertical post attached to the arch, when only the unit load for case 1 is present. Since the other loading cases cause negative moment at that point, they ought not to be present for the maximum positive moment to develop. So, when a single vehicle carrying the maximum allowed load of P max is positioned on top of the vertical post, bending moment in the arch 
reaches its maximum positive value at that location. The same pattern occurs at the other end of the arch, under the rightmost vertical post. The moment diagrams reveal that under loading case 4, the maximum positive moment could also develop under the post. So, when a vehicle exerting a load of P max is at the top of the vertical post, positive bending moment at that point reaches the maximum value. As for the location of the maximum negative moment, a close examination of the moment diagrams suggests that it occurs somewhere in between 3 and 9.5 meters away from the left support. But only when we combine loading cases 2, 3, and 4, since they all result in a negative moment in that region of the arch. This means that when each of the three rightmost vertical posts is subjected to a vehicular load of P max, the absolute maximum negative moment develops somewhere in this region. To pinpoint the exact location of the moment, we need to resort to algebra. Let's write the relevant moment equation for each loading case. Now add the three equations to get a single equation for that region of the arch. This equation attains its maximum value when its derivative vanishes. Therefore, let's set the derivative of the equation to zero, then solve for x. So, bending moment reaches its maximum negative value 4.7 meters to the right of point A. To determine the magnitude of the moment at this location, Substitute 4.7 in this equation. Hence, maximum negative moment in the arch is 1.85 kilonewton meters, if P max is assumed to be 1 kilonewton. Due to the symmetrical nature of the bridge, we can also see that the same maximum negative moment could occur at the other end of the arch, somewhere between 13.5 and 20 meters from point A. That is, when the unit load for case 4 is absent and the other loading cases are combined, negative moment reaches its maximum value in this interval. This scenario corresponds to having a vehicle placed at the top of each of the three leftmost posts, like this. To determine the location of the maximum moment, we need to add up the relevant bending moment equations for loading cases 1, 2, and 3. Here is the cumulative moment equation. Set its derivative to 0, then solve for x. So, under this combined loading scenario, bending moment reaches its absolute maximum negative value 18.3 meters away from the left support. If we substitute 18.3 for x in the moment equation, we get the magnitude of the maximum moment under the assumption that P max is a unit load. Let's summarize our findings. The absolute maximum positive moment occurs here, when the maximum vehicular load is here. The magnitude of this moment is 2 times P max. The absolute maximum negative moment takes place here, 4.7 meters to the right of the left pin support, when the maximum vehicular load pattern assumes this position. The magnitude of this moment is 1.85 Pmax. The arch has another point of absolute maximum negative moment here, when the load assumes this pattern. And here is another critical point in the arch, where absolute maximum positive moment develops when a single vehicular load is positioned on top of the post.